Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com. It is still in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today we discuss the Roger Dubuis. If you're going to buy a Dubuis, people always say buy one of the early models. And if you're going to buy one of the early models, get the Sympathie. If you're going to get the Sympathie, get the biretrograde perpetual calendar because not only is it iconic it is the watch that Dubuis himself wore to the end of his life and the early sympathie models are more desirable as they feature a case bezel inner bezel crystal and dial that share this wonderfully fluid occasionally tortured alternately creased and curved form that is so distinctive of the brand this is the one to own this is serial number one of a 28-piece limited edition in the series in gorgeous white gold. The Sympathie 37 is exactly 37 millimeters in diameter. You guessed well. From lug tip to lug tip, 47.6 millimeters. It's 9.8 millimeters thick and has a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. This watch fits nicely on my wrist, though I will advise that it wears large for something that's at least nominally 37 millimeters in diameter. I'm gonna recommend that your wrist be 15 centimeters circumference or up to wear this. It has no problem sliding under a cuff, but as you can see from over the top, and even a little bit down the barrel, those broad lugs do cause it to wear a size or two larger. So 15 centimeters circumference wrists and up, you're looking at 16 right here. The strap, is a Jean Rousseau. They are the OEM supplier to Debetun, FP Journe, and others. We like to use them when we have an opportunity to complement a watch with a nice paired color, and that's exactly what we have here. Large rectangular scale, symmetrical scale alligator leather in a sort of reddish brown, or I might even say brownish red, because it feels more red than brown in person. It's a bonded strap design, which means there's adhesive fixing the calfskin at the bottom to the gaiter at the top, and so there's no stitching to break it up. It's a very seamless, clean design. A brand new strap, you can see no crimping, no gouging. And it's large, rectangular, symmetrical scale, which indicates a very expensive cut of the beast. We have a Roger Dubuis logo on the buckle of this single fold deployant clasp, which helps to guard against accidental dropping. That is the point of a deployant clasp. Snaps shut, the tolerances remain outstanding. Horloge Genevois, and indeed it was. You could see on the case profile a lot of nuance. The lugs are welded on and exquisitely handcrafted. A welded lug case involves taking a case with slots and lugs built separately, inserting one into the other, welding them together, and then removing evidence of the weld by hand. It is a lot more laborious than the more common methods of stamping and machining cases, so it's slow going. It's the kind of thing you'll only see on low volume watches that cost a lot of money. It's artisanal, traditional, and beautiful. Now the straps held on by screws and bars. There's actually no spring bars here, so this is a very secure setup as it tends to be more expensive to manufacture like the welded lugs, but it also offers more security against dropping. We have the RD logo on the polished crown and then on the lug faces as well as the case band of vertical satination. The case back, the lug hoods, and the bezel are all polished. Now you can see this is a tiered bezel. It's got several different flanges as it steps up from the case. And later on, in the early years, from about 95 to just about the end of the 90s, the first generation Sympathie, they had a sort of symmetry where the outer case, the outer bezel, the inner bezel, crystal, and the dial all had this shape. Later on, to make them cheaper, Everything inboard of the outer bezel was made circular. This is the one you want. And this example right here was retailed back in 2000. It was part of that first series. Uh, this is serial number one, and it comes with an extraordinary boxed set. These things came with all the trimmings. The early Roger Dubuis sets were not large in size, but very dense in features. You get the Besançon French chronometer card with everything from the name of the Reguleur to the Delta between positions to the total variation. And this watch was running so far in excess of COSC requirements that is better than COSC that it was almost, I would say, 
holding to about half the tolerances in terms of deviation that COSC would allow. And remember, the Besson-Son French Observatory test, that's what Bulletin d'Observatoire refers to, that is a fully cased-up test. It's not a bare movement test like the COSC. So you get that full filled-out chronometer card with all the results of the test, including in positions and temperatures. And then you also get the certificate for the Geneva Hallmark, and you can see that this watch does feature the Poisson de Genève, and it comes with a little booklet explaining exactly how this watch earned that honor and when it did so. It also comes with an accessory solid white gold case back, a symbol of integrity. They're not cheating you of, you know, roughly one ounce of gold by giving you this relatively worthless 30 Swiss franc sapphire. You get both this display case back and the white gold case back that's solid, so you're not cheated of the metal and you can choose which one to use. Again, this is a full set watch and the set is exquisite. Lots to love here. You can see the dial features a track out board that includes a combination of red and black calibrations. And then a lot of people ask me what exactly is going on with this 300 calibration. And this is sort of inherited from old field watches from an era when artillery spotting required timing to one fifth of a second. So five times 60, and that's how we get to 300. So from zero to 300, that's what that's all about. Uh, but you can see that the calibrations allow you to read the individual seconds quite easily. We have a silver sunburst metallic dial. We have little blued and skeletonized leaf style hands for the biretrograde, and then a few dart style white gold indices with white gold leaf hands and seconds at center. White gold used because it will not oxidize or tarnish. And this GQHM thing at the bottom that is Geneva Quality Handmade, unusual that it would be an abbreviation of English right below something that says Horloger Genevois, but such is the contradiction of luxury watchmaking. Not everything makes sense. This module, the Perpetual Calendar by Retrograde Moon Phase, was originally developed by Dubuis and Jean-Marc Viderecht, later of Agenor, for the original Harry Winston High Horology watch, the by Retrograde Perpetual of 1989. So Dubuis here is deploying it on his own construction. So you have a moon phase that requires only one adjustment every 122.7 years, then the Perpetual Calendar need not be adjusted until the year 2100. Coaxial month and leap year. You've got your day, you've got your date, the retrograde action, the moon phase down at the base. And on the back, what Rudge Dupuy calls the RD5772. Now, the 57 is the root reference, and that is Roger Dupuy's version of a Longines L990, which is a very thin, fine, and potentially exquisitely accurate tractor movement. It has two barrels in series and a 44-hour power reserve automatic winding. It was designed in the late 1970s as the last truly in-house Longines movement, and its hallmark is that it's got plenty of torque to drive complications. It's very thin. It can be decorated exquisitely with bridge modifications and accoutrements, such as a black polished swan's neck fine adjustment. There is a Geneva seal. This watch lives up to those standards. And with the twin barrels in series, although it's only a 44-hour power reserve, you get a very, very flat torque curve, allowing, among other things, precise regulation for most of the effective power reserve and very little fluctuation without the requirement of adding something complex like a constant force device. You can see that it is nicely finished. There's a ghosted RD logo under the sapphire, again in rose gold on the rotor. We have linear stripes laid down by abrasive wheel. We have beveling inside all of the jewel sinks, mirror beveling or anglage on the edge of the bridges as well as the edge of the rotor, engine turned perlage on the base plate, all screw heads black polished with chamfered slots and circumference, black polished stud holder as well as swan's neck fine adjustment adjustment mechanism. We have satin finished wheels, which are quite comely. And then you can see that the stripes in particular, although they're narrow, they're densely packed and they have a wonderful shading gradient across their surfaces, which is something I always look for. This watch is spectacular. 30 meters water resistance, so don't take it swimming, but in every other regard, this is an everyday watch. Roger Dubuis himself proved that. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.